Hi guys and welcome to the month of April because it feels weird starting these vlogs off with me from a month ago. So this is present day me saying a big hello and we're just going to do a super quick rundown of all the things in this vlog because there is a lot of them and it's really hard to convey them all in a title and thumbnail. So you can skip ahead on the timestamps below if you so wish. But very briefly we are going to be one doing a morning spring clean of the guinea pig's cage, two we are taking Lyra and Pedro to the vets, revealing which vet we actually go and see. Then I'm going to run through some exciting social media stuff that I've been doing this month and we are going to have some updates on two projects that I've been working on lately. But that is enough from me for now and I will catch up with you later in the video. First job of the day is always the medicines. So Pedro's just had his thyroid arm and Lyra has had her vet medin. Lyra is just loving the paper bag that I put in the cage yesterday. I came in this morning and she's in there munching away at all the hay. But unfortunately the bottom has kind of disintegrated in it and the hay has spilled out all over the cage. I'm actually going to do a full change out of the liner this morning. I did some washing yesterday so I have all new stuff ready to go in the cage. This includes this lovely new liner and as for the other things I usually get a selection of things out to start with and then end up changing things around once I start putting stuff in the cage. Here's Pedro this morning, having a bit of a lazy lie-in. <laughs> the terrible twosome. Are you ever going to be friends? You are sisters, you know. stuff in here is still fairly clean. I only put it in yesterday so I'm probably going to reuse it in the new cage as well. Excuse me. Hey missus, come out for me. Let me get rid of this stinky bag. She starts eating the hay right next to it. Oh, oh gross. That, don't go underneath it. Yeah, that's going straight in the bin. I don't do the full cage clean every single day like I am doing today but lately I have gotten into the routine of doing the litter tray first thing in the morning straight after I've done their medicines. It just feels good to set them up for the day with a freshly cleaned litter tray. What I'll do with these is just pop them on the floor whilst I sort out the rest of the cage. to shake that off properly outside just before I put it in the washing machine. And we just give that a proper good wipe down with kitchen roll. There we go. Acceptable. Keep that in that corner. We do really love the wooden house. There we go. Hi guys! 
Hoodies, so I wanted to share something a bit different with you today, and that's the fact that we were featured on Cavi's blog posts to celebrate International Women's Day, which in case you don't know was on the 8th of March. So I've worked with Cavi before, I have actually built one of their CNC cages, there's an old video on my channel, but they kind of emailed me out of the blue and asked if I wanted to take part, and if I did, could I answer a set of interview style questions, and that my blog post will be featured alongside some other inspirational guinea pig women and oh my god <laughs> when I saw those photos come through on Instagram and there I was next to Saskia from LA guinea pig rescue, Julia from Little Adventures and our very own the guinea pig vet I just I couldn't believe my eyes. So if you want to read our blog post, and I will pop it in the description below, please also go and read the other interviews because they're really interesting to see how people answered the questions differently. And some of those questions were really hard as well. They made me think about what I do on YouTube and how it translates into real life. And I kind of realized that I don't like talking about the fact that I have a YouTube channel and it's about guinea pigs because I just expect people people to have this misconception about guinea pigs that I'm gonna have to play it down or pretend it's not that important to me when actually guinea pigs are incredibly important to me. So in the real world I want to try and change that and communicate to people how awesome guinea pigs are and I urge you to do the same because the world doesn't seem to have realised how fantastic they are just yet. Today it is vet day, we are taking Lyra and Pedro over to the guinea pig vet because yes that is the vet I use for their checkup and for Lyra it's been about since uh, January that she was last at the vet and she seems to be doing okay so it'll be useful for the vet to see her in person and see what she thinks and then for Pedro we're also taking him again for a sort of checkup. He hasn't gained any weight yet still or just a very small amount even even though he's been on double the thyronome dose so we're going to see what she thinks whether there's any further investigations worth doing or not Whee. okay 832 come on then sausage ready mister do half at once now we've got double the amount Yeah, you're always good at dodging the second one, aren't you? There we go. It's so good. This box is so ancient, but it's just the perfect size for two piggies. Eight likes. Yes. Okay, 819. Hang on there then. Yeah. Oh, yummy. It is going to take us about two hours to get to the vets, which might sound like a ridiculously long time, probably not for people in the US. However, it is totally worth it because she is an amazing vet. Um, I think she's probably one of the best guinea pig vets in the country, without a doubt. And just all the advice she's given us has been so practical. And, you know, she's done the further test without dilly dallying about it and having to, you know, wait long periods of time to book in for other appointments and stuff. Because that's the thing, guinea pigs, when they're poorly, they don't really have time to wait around a couple of weeks to go back into the vet hospital for further x-rays. They need help and they need diagnosis then and there. I just feel extremely lucky after having lots of bad experiences with vets in the past to have finally found someone, even if she is a couple of hours drive away, it is without a shadow of a doubt completely worth it. Are we ready to go? So I apologise for the state of the cardboard box, but it does make an excellent travelling container. <laughs> they look fairly happy in there, so we've got a bit of a journey ahead of us. 
just all the guinea pig drugs hanging out in the uh, car there. We've just been in to see the guinea pig vet. Both Lyra and Pedro have been checked over. For Lyra, it's just a case of managing her condition still, sticking with her on the vet medin. And as for Pedro, who really doesn't want to come out and say hello, <laughs> he has had his teeth rasped down again. With an experienced vet, it can be done without any anaesthetic or anything. And he's literally just, I was in the room waiting for probably less than five minutes while she just popped away with him and sorted his teeth out. Hi there. Are you ready for another long drive home? So I have just got home without showing you any addresses. Vetmedin for Lyra. A new bottle of Loxicom, which is Metacam, same thing. Lyranorm for Pedro. Fruzol, which is a diuretic. This just makes me laugh. I had some diuretic from the other vets and it was like the stingiest amount in the bottom of the bottle and I was using it really sparingly when I thought Lyra needed it. And then, wow, suddenly I've got like a litre of the stuff. It's great. I can't remember what I said in the car because I, my memory's terrible but Pedro will have to go back every eight to ten weeks and get his teeth refiled down so it's a good opportunity to bring Lyra in as well if she seems like she could do with having a checkup and just see how her heart's getting on. With Lyra, she is actually seven in three days time. It is Lyra's seventh birthday on the 19th of March so we have to definitely get some extra treats or just extra love and cuddles that day. The vet was totally honest with me. She said, you know, obviously, obviously I know Lyra's not going to be around forever. Um, she'd be very surprised if she reaches eight years old. Most guinea pigs don't and that's just the way things are. And, um, you know, we'd be looking at, at three to six months really with how the heart is sounding at the minute. Obviously, I hope that she goes way beyond that, but um, all I can do is Look after her best I can. Right, grass. Who wants some grass? Happy birthday, my sweetie. <laughs> you know what's coming, don't you? <laughs> Here you go. Cannot believe it's been a full seven years with Lyra. <laughs> yes, you're very special, Emma, darling. Lyra is just enjoying some cucumber and cherry tomato, and then a bit later on, we are all going to get some grass. And I just thought I'd show you this. It might be interesting to some of you. This is actually Lyra's pedigree. She is the first and only pedigree guinea pig I've ever had. And because I've got this, it means that I know her exact birth date, which is the 19th of March. March 2015. And you can see that she was given a name. Her name was originally Bunny, but I did change that because I wasn't too keen on Bunny. And we've got a little family tree here. So if you were a breeder and into this sort of thing, you could see which guinea pigs were in the sort of lineage going back. And you can see the names of all the piggies and what colours they were as well. So we could see that Lyra's mum was a Lunkai, of course, a Silver Agouti, and Lyra's dad was a chocolate and white Lunkaya. It's no, <laughs> it's on top. So Lara wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who commented on our posts on YouTube and Instagram and sent their birthday wishes to her. Thank you so much for that, it really meant a lot. Unsuspecting piggies. All is calm and quiet in the cage. <laughs> I'm gonna go and get them a plate full of grass and see what happens. Wow. <laughs> Why are you hiding over there? Hello? <laughs> Pedro. Pedro is completely oblivious. He, he's a funny one. <laughs> he never notices when there's food around. I mean, maybe he's a bit deaf, I don't know. And then as soon as you go near him, he's... Oh, he's just tired. Bless him, he's, he's really tired. Usually as soon as you go near him, he's like, Whoa, give me some food. Oh, yes, big squeaks! <laughs> wow, Roxy, I'm really impressed. Incoming! Way, wow, what is that? Pedro has still not noticed. You're in a grump. There we go. How's that? I love how they make this little rumble. 
which is like the happy I've got food and it's mine noise. So relaxing just hearing guinea pigs munching. Well, who do we have here? If you've been following the vlogs, you'll know that we acquired a resident racing pigeon almost a year ago now. Well, lately we haven't seen as much of him, but he pops back every now and then with a new friend. This lovely lady, who may or may not be a lady, is a good sign that he's adapting to a new life in the wild. We still put seed out when we see them, but there's no more roosting on the windowsill. I'm guessing they've just found somewhere better together. So we are nearing the end of the month and as promised I have a bit of a project update for you guys. First things first, well I had a week off work um, which was really good, got to work on some things. First of all I will start off with the hammocks and the good news is that I finally have the finished insert design. Um, let's use this one as an example. So we've got the kind of patterned one underneath and then a fleece in here. We've got some lovely top stitching going on. We've got the these little hooky bits to go onto the hooks and I am going to make them a bit shorter than this actually in an effort to try and make it so they don't fall off at all and yeah they've also got some wadding in here so it's a bit kind of cushioned and cozy for them as well and I just want to make them um, really good quality and um, to go with the wooden hammocks themselves they're all handmade they take a lot of time and effort they're all hand sanded down by my fair hand and now I just have to make 16 of them because that is how many hammocks we will have available in our first batch. I know some of you have been asking after them which makes me even more excited. So yeah there will be the first batch out soon, look out for it on Etsy but there will of course be posts on the YouTube community and on Instagram as well so hopefully you won't miss out if you really want one and there will be other batches in the future as well. As I say because they're handmade we'll just do them in small batches and put them up every now and again. And Speaking about revealing things, the second project that I want to talk to you about is this second sewing pattern. So firstly, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone who bought the cuddle cup pattern. I've so enjoyed seeing all of your completed beds. You've all done amazingly and really made me proud <laughs> and also kind of reassured me that the instructions were good enough. People have been asking after a second pattern and whether it could be more of a covered Heidi type bed rather than another open bed. You asked and I delivered. <laughs> I've actually redesigned my very own Heidi hut and this is the second bed that the sewing pattern will be available for very very soon. I have made it so it's more spacious inside, I've made the entrance bigger because I know I talk a lot about having Heidi's where it's really good to get a good view of your guinea pigs, it makes them less shy and more kind of outgoing and confident. And with this one you can also do alternating patterns so you can use more than one fabric for the outside. It is more of a challenge than the cuddle cup, I'll be totally honest about that but from the feedback I got from you guys I think a lot of you found the cuddle cup really easy to do the instructions were clear and there's nothing too complicated about it it does just take longer to make there are more steps and for this one as well I would recommend having a sewing machine but it's probably going to be three to four weeks before the video is up which will coincide with the pattern release but yeah I am super excited for both these projects they've been a long time coming as with everything I kind of think ahead to these things I want to do and to see them actually materialize and happen is just super exciting. I think I had the cuddle cup idea on my head for like three years and I just never got around to doing it and then one day I was like I've got to book a week off work and just get this done. So yeah the same thing with these I'm really super excited to bring these things to you guys and I hope that you are as excited as I am. So that's where I'm gonna leave this vlog. I really hope you enjoyed seeing the behind the scenes for the month of March. If you did then please drop me a comment below, please give the video a like so I know that you enjoyed it. So with that I will leave you with some adorable footage of the guinea pigs and Lyra especially because it was a very special month for sweet little Lyra. Thank you so much for watching everybody and we will see you in the next video. Bye bye!